red carpet, no Malaska, and this is a Siberian Husky, and his daddy's gonna take us on a wild dog sled ride. Hi, I'm Lance Nakasoni in Hawaii, and I'm gonna show you a spectacular volcanic eruption. I'm Michelle Martin, reporting from the Columbia Glacier in Alaska, and we're gonna show you the birth of an iceberg. This, this is a report, report by kids, kids from our new estates, Alaska and Hawaii. And Hawaii. Yes, we are from Alaska, the biggest state of all. Oh, we are from Alaska, Mount McKinley stands so tall. There's miles and miles of land up here, but if you want to try to see what God has made for us, my friend, you'll have to fly. There's dogs that rise or ice and snow and gold that's in the stream. We'll tan both day and night, the midnight sun will light our dream. There's black gold pumped up from the ground and through the pipeline goes. And floating icebergs in the sea are born from glacial flows. Old men and no make carve from bone on lonely winter nights. And salmon try to jump the falls, but then they spawn and die. Oh, we are from Alaska, the biggest state of all. White sand beach lays for you. Pineapple sweet, sugar cane, swaying palm and falling rain. Hula's dance and orchids grow. Soaring cliffs, waterfalls, jungle green on canyon walls. I bet you they don't have dog slips in Hawaii. Valley in Alaska, we've got cabbages weighing 75 pounds. They never stop growing because the sun never sets. Would you believe we have the world's biggest rhubarb in Alaska? That's nothing. In Hawaii, we got violets eight feet tall. Yeah, Hawaii is really the neatest place. Take the rainforest. It's the wettest spot in the world. The summit of Waialeale gets 460 inches of rain a year. Well, what about Mount Taliesca in Alaska? We have 27 feet of snow. We've got the tallest mountain. Mount McKinley is the tallest mountain in the United States. <laughs> Yours may be the tallest, but we've got the hottest one. You're looking at Kilauea, probably the most active volcano in the world. The Kilauea caldera is a lake of boiling lava. Lava is melted rock that has boiled up from beneath the earth. Each time there is an eruption, a huge amount of molten lava flows out, and the island grows a little bigger. In fact, all of the Hawaiian islands are made up of lava that has erupted here for millions of years. Michelle Martin reporting from the Glacier Queen in front of the Columbia Glacier in Alaska. Glaciers like this are solid packs of ice more than 300 to 400 feet above the water and as much as 400 feet below the water. They are slowly pressing their way to the sea. The Columbia Glacier stretches out over 17 miles up the valley. It is nearly a mile thick and nine miles across the face. Gradually, large chunks of ice break off and drift away in the form of huge icebergs. And when it happens, they call it calving. The horn helps. <laughs> the birth of an iceberg from the Columbia Glacier in Alaska. Alaska is so big and so rugged that there just aren't very many roads here. This is the largest seaplane base in the world. 45% of all the seaplanes that fly are based in Alaska. 
and there's good reason for it. A float plane can land almost any place where there's a little pond or a lake. There are many towns and villages in Alaska that you can only visit by airplane. David Karp has that story from St. Louis Island in the Bering Sea. We may not have many roads up here, but we do have some of the greatest pilots and the best air taxi service in the world. We are now at Gamble on St. Lawrence Island, nearly 200 miles away from Nome and 48 miles away from Siberia. We are waiting for the arrival of the mail plane from Nome. Less than 400 people live here, and the airplane is the only contact they have with the rest of the world. The nearest village is 40 miles away, and there are no roads. Everyone is anxious for a letter from friends, or maybe even a package they've ordered from the catalog. Even the groceries have to be shipped in by airplane. It's summertime now, but these airplanes fly even when it's 40 below zero. This is David Carp reporting from Gamble on St. Lawrence Island. This is Lance Nakasone, and it's a little bit warmer where I am in the Willy Willy Harbor on the beautiful island of Kauai, one of the eight islands in the Hawaiian group. I'm waiting for Seaflight, the hydrofoil jet boat that skims across the water at 50 miles an hour, and it's coming from Honolulu. It's hard to believe that the Hawaiian Islands were completely uninhabited until about 1,200 years ago, when the Polynesians first came here, sailing in twin hulled canoes. Nowadays, practically every little girl raised in Hawaii learns the hula. famous spouting horn on the island of Kauai. The waves come roaring through volcanic lava tubes and make a sound like a horn. Sheba, Sheba, what you doing? Here it goes. Come Richard Burmeister keeps over 30 Siberian huskies, and when it's feeding time, they really get excited. Oh, yeah, that's the boy. Shake hands. That's it. That's it. That's the boy. That's the boy. Love you, baby. Love you. Mush! Mush! Well, maybe if I change the lead dog, it would work. But back in the old days, this was the way an Eskimo hunter could see out a long distance to see if there was any game to hunt. See it down there? See it shining, just kind of glittering in the sunlight yeah. there? The little stuff? Another kind of gold promises to be even more important to Alaska. Black gold, in the form of crude oil, being pumped through the Alaska pipeline and hauled away in tankers from the Port of Valdez. The pipeline and Alaskan oil will help solve America's growing energy problem. Fishing, and particularly salmon fishing, is perhaps the most important Alaskan industry. We're at Ninilchik on the Kenai Peninsula, where the fishing fleet is getting ready to go after the silver salmon. While thousands of salmon are taken each year, thousands more escape the nets to swim back upstream. A few may wind up on a fisherman's line, but most survive to lay their eggs in the shallow headwaters of Alaska's streams and then die in a mysterious cycle of nature. We have our share of tourists in Alaska, too, and a lot of them come to Mount Alyuska Resort to ski or just to enjoy the view. And what better place to try out a summer run with this beautiful team of Samoyeds? But first, we have to take them up the chairlift.
greetings from our newest states, Alaska and Hawaii. I still say you don't have any palm trees. You don't have any icebergs in Hawaii, so we're even. Would you believe we have the world's biggest rhubarb in Alaska? The summit of Waialiali gets 460 inches of rain a year. Well, what about Mount Alyeska in Alaska? We have 27 feet of snow. Michelle Martin reporting from the Glacier Queen in front of the Columbia Glacier in Alaska. And when it happens, they call it calving. The horn helps. <laughs> the birth of an iceberg from the Columbia Glacier in Alaska. There are many towns and villages in Alaska that you can only visit by airplane. David Karp has that story from St. Louis Island in the Bering Sea. We're at Ninilchik on the Kenai Peninsula, where the fishing fleet is getting ready to go after the silver salmon. But first, we have to take them up the chairlift. helps. 